Hi everyone, my name is Leanna from Love Learning STEM. I'm here to bring you top tips on how to catch up your students in math class when they are one to two grades below grade level. Now I know I've had students like that, I continue and I know I will continue to have students like that same as you. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you top tips on how to catch them up in math class for K to five, um, fifth grade. So uh, the very first thing that I realized that I needed to do was have pre-assessments in the beginning of the school year or before a unit. Um, if you're currently in the middle of a unit, do not be afraid to give your assessment right there and there for what you want them to know at the end of the unit or at the end of the grade. Uh, this pre-assessment is so uh, informative for me. It really guides my instruction for the rest of the school year. And it basically tells me, it shows me which students and what percentage of students understand the content that I need them to understand for that school year. Um, I see, okay, let's see, a standard, this standard, all of the students are able to get this. I know that I don't need to spend too much time on that standard. I could simply uh, brush over that standard and go to the standards that are really, it takes so much time, especially when you're teaching in a, a non-face-to-face -face setting such as distance learning or blended learning. Um, standards such as fractions and all the different parts of or components of fractions take so much longer than the curriculum only actually sets out for. So when you do pre-assessments, you can see, well, hey, my kids understand this, this, and this. I'm going to brush over those and shorten the time that the cur curriculum sets out for um, and spend much more time in fractions. Now, uh, there are these resources in the comments. I'm going to be putting a link to a bundle and inside that bundle if you go for the k to or i'm sorry the third to fifth grade uh bundle you get all of third grade assessments and all of fifth grade assessments so if your student is in the fifth grade and you notice and after you give them that pre-assessment you notice that your kid has um covered this much and they need this much more you can actually go back and see what gaps are they missing? Um, and you can give them the assessments or practice pages from the third grade assessment in that resource bundle to, to gauge their learning, to have them practicing. Um, so you, the next thing you can do is have engaging lessons with videos they can watch after. Sometimes kids need to hear a lesson one way, maybe face to face, and then they need to see it again in a different way. Um, some kids might even need more than that. And so it's best to actually record your lesson maybe have different examples and or you can ex ex record the exact lesson you're teaching whether you're in the classroom or online so we know how beneficial it is to have our re lessons recorded for the kids that don't show up and so this is a practice that we need to continue having so these kids that are already behind in math class um, if they miss a day because you know some of them are chronic absentees uh, they can actually go to these videos watch these clips that are not too long 5, 10, 15 minutes in length of direct instruction, and they get to catch up. They get to do the practice work as if they were there with you that first day. So record your lessons. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about are infusing these project-based learning uh, uh, inside your curriculum. You, I know it is. The curriculum sets out for on this day you teach this, the kids fill out this worksheet. On this day they do this and then they fill out the worksheet. Um, we need to step away from this. You need to be able to understand that kids need engaging uh, projects that are directly applied to real life. And so these project-based uh, um, project based units that you find um, can relate to, let's say, area and perimeter. In that same comment that I have in the link, in that bundle, you will also see a uh, create, design a zoo math unit for project-based learning. And the students are actually designing a zoo, learning about area and perimeter. They're learning about decimals and fractions, and all within this project that kids are actually creating. They're, they're not just consuming they're actually synthesizing and creating. So this is really important, especially if you want your kids catching up. Okay, the next thing is review. And I'm gonna connect that to homework as a review. So create a list of questions 
or in that bundle, there is 275 prompts that are ready to go for digital and print. Um, have ready to go math when they come in from recess. Have ready to go work when they log into Google Classroom. Have ready to go work when they are transitioning from one uh, to the next activity that is ready to go in a journal where they just flip a page and say, kids, uh, work on page one today. We're going to be reviewing because this is all review. They should know this if they don't know it. The, f uh, the five minute catch up lesson after they do that is going to fill them into gaps. So you'll, every day you'll have your math instruction, but in addition, you'll have that 15 minutes of students working on that review page as well as them completing that, uh, let's say, let's say they do the, the review page, um, it takes up seven minutes, right? And then you'll take five minutes after that to call up a student up to the board or have them talk within pods or pairs or within groups and they figure out what the answer is and you get to fill in those gaps for those students that don't know it. This time is so crucial that you cannot miss, and it's not included in your math lesson. It is separate from it. You can have it in the beginning or at the end, but it's always nice to have this separate time, this transitional time that's 15 minutes that students can get to work right away, and uh, they're catching up. Okay, uh, so another thing you are going to need to do um, are having some type of feedback uh, from your students. What's working well in the instruction and what's not? Because our instruction in the classroom is so tied to student learning. We think, oh yeah, the kids, they have um, these home environments or their parents are a certain way or they're always missing class. Uh, but when we do that, we're focusing on things we can't control, things that we have no say in sometimes. Um, and what we need to do is focus on what we have and what we see and what we can work with. And so I think um, in this time, you can ask your students, hey, how what's working in math class? What's not working? What can we do more of so you can be more engaged in because you need to learn and grow in this content? Um, so it's this conversation that you need to have with your students. It can't just be you in your head thinking, oh, I need to get I need to get Johnny up to grade level four. I need to get Susan um, and Juan up to whatever so and so and so. No, it's a two-way street between you and your student and the families, if you can get them involved. Uh, but this conversation needs to be had. There needs to be goals set. Um, and your students need to know exactly what they're working towards. So let's say by in two months from now, students are going to, if they don't know their multiplication tables, you're going to say, hey, by this time, I need you to know your multiplication tables. I need you to know all of your the one to 12 multiplication tables in two months. Here's what you need to practice. Here's when we're gonna meet maybe once a week in small groups, maybe 10 minutes uh, every so often, just me and you, but the kids need to know the action plan and you need to have that set as well. Now this seems like a lot of work, but uh, it's so beneficial and you can mainstream it where you have, obviously you do centers, You uh, teachers do centers. Um, it's just being more mindful of remembering that kids are lacking in subjects from the previous years. So it's bringing in that content, bringing in that the practice from that previous years to be able to uh, teach that. And if you at all uh, need resources, you can create all of this on your own. But if you need any resources, go ahead and click that link either in the description or the comment. You will have a crazy savings that is 80% off. If you are a K-5 math teacher, you get the entire K-5 bundle for $34. If you're K-2, it's $19. If you're 3-5, it's also $19. But combined, you get over 1,700 pages and slides. Every single assignment is digital and print. And again, combined, you get 409 activities. It's ridiculous how many standards you will cover with just one of these smaller bundles, whether it's K2 or 3.5, and you can use year after year and you feel more equipped to handle this load with your students to be able to differentiate for all of them. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I hope you take all of these strategies and you're able to implement them in your classrooms and you're able to uh, get that rolling. I wish you the best for you and your students and let's keep on trekking. Bye everybody.